Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on BGP. Let's start our part 3. Let's look into BGP synchronization rules. So what this rules is about. Now let's look into this topology first. So I have 3 AS, 100, 200 and 300. So assuming in AS100, I have a network of 10 network, I want to advertise to AS200 and 300. So R1 and R2 is an eBGP uh, relationship. So R1 will send to R2 about the network of 10. Okay, so that should not be any problem. Now, but R3 is not a BGP router. You can see that they are purely running IGP. So the relationship between R2 and R4 is IBGP. All right, because that we only have the uh, TCP connection, there's not an issue. Now R2 can go to R4 through IGP. There's not an issue, but when I send this update to R4 regarding 10.0.0.0, R4 do aware about the 10 network, but R3 do not know about the 10 network. The reason is because that the 10 network is a BGP route. Okay, so these are the BGP route. Whereas R3 do not run BGP, so it doesn't have the 10 network. Now, assuming that this is R4 and we have the synchronization rules, what R4 will do is it will going to check the IGP. In this case, it can be OSPF or ISIS to check do I have already 10 network in my IGP? If in my IGP I have 10 network and in the BGP I have a 10 network, only then I will advertise to R5. If in my IGP I do not have it because that the synchronization rules is enabled, I'm not going to send this information or update this information to R5. This is prevent when R5 is going to go through me as a transit, assuming that if let's say that is true and I do not follow the synchronization rules, and I do advertise, what will happen over here is, assuming that R5 now want to go to the 10 network, so what it does over here is, it's going to send to R4, R4 is going to advertise to R3. Now R3 do not know where is the 10 network, so eventually it will go to throw away. So uh, be aware that in Huawei, the synchronization rule is disabled. Okay, we disable the synchronization. In another word, in the Huawei router, you need to have a full mesh topology. All of this need to run a BGP. So in the later of the chapter, we are going to look into in a huge network, we may not able to scale very well because of the mesh topology. This is where we require to use a concept called route reflector, or we are going to use a confederation. Okay, so these are the two methods that we can uh, solve the uh, synchronization problem. Now let's look into the uh, BGP route attribute. In BGP, we categorize the route attribute into four categories. The first one, which is very important, is called well-known mandatory attribute. The second one is well-known discretionary. Third one is optional transitive. And the fourth one here is optional non-transitive. Now, basically, there are two groups over here. We call it as a well-known. All right, and optional. This two group is very important. Uh, well known, basically what it means here is that those BGP uh, that is being implemented in the router regardless whichever vendor, the attribute are well known. So this tar attribute can be identified by all the BGP router regardless on the vendor and must be carried in the update. That is what means by mandatory, it is a must. Okay, so if let's say this attribute is not being carried, then the error will be occur. Now, example of the well-known mandatory include origin, all right, is a well-known mandatory. AS path is a well-known mandatory. Next hop, okay. So these are the well-known uh, mandatory attribute, and it have to be present in all the BGP routers. Whereas well-known discretionary, the meaning here is that this type of attribute can be identified by all the router and is not necessarily carry. So which means that all the router will able to identify this, but not necessarily uh, will be present in the uh, update. 
Example on the well-known discretionary will be local preference. All right, local preference is one of the well-known discretionary. Another example will be atomic aggregate. All right, this is also a well-known discretionary. Now, um, another category of the raw attribute is an optional, and optional also we have two uh, subcategory. Either is transitive or non-transitive. Uh, when we look into the optional transitive, this attribute is a transitive attribute between BGP speaker. Now, the meaning of optional means that not all BGP uh, router do support it. So some of these attributes will be private and may not be supported. The transitive basically means that even the router may not recognize this type of attribute, it will accept and propagate to other peer. Example, one, one good example of the uh, optional transitive will be community. Okay, community is one of the optional transitive. Another one is called aggregator. Again, this is an optional transitive attribute. So uh, some router may not support it, but they will advertise it, or in this case, they will propagate it. Now, uh, last, we have the optional non-transitive. The optional non-transitive basically means that the router do not support it, and the router may not advertise them. Example is MED. Okay, so MED stands for multi-exit discriminator. is one of the uh, optional non transitive. Uh, it may also have like cluster list. Okay, cluster list is also an optional non transitive. Now we are going to look into the attribute, uh, which is a well known mandatory in detail. Now origin is a BGP well known mandatory attribute. The origin attribute inform all the autonomous system how the prefix introduced into BGP. So there are three ways that we can introduce this uh, prefix, namely IGP, EGP, and incomplete. The IGP value, uh, we are using the network statement. All right, so we are using the BGP network statement. All right, this will be the IGP. A route with the origin attribute is obtained through the IGP, the origin attribute of this uh, I. So when you do a display BGP route, when you see that the origin is I, is an IGP. Our second method is the EGP. Now EGP is quite an old protocol and is generated by EGP protocol. And the origin of the EGP is an E. Uh, nowadays, we seldom see this origin EGP. Now the second uh, most common one will be the incomplete. So incomplete, when you see this uh, label as question mark, is basically we are going to use the import statement. So whether you import from direct or other routing protocols such as RIP, OSPF, ISIS, all right, you will be able to see that that is the question mark, incomplete. So a route with origin attribute incomplete, it run it learned by other means, okay? So in this exercise, I'm going to show you how you can change the origin. So on router 2, when I do a display PGP routing table, uh, you can see that I have my route 102, that's my internal, okay? And uh, this is being propagate or being advertised by AS100. As you can see, the origin is an I. I is in IGP, so I can do a display BGP route with 101.110 to see the detail. So you can see that the origin is IGP, and uh, router 1 is using a network statement. Okay, using a network statement, so that's where my origin is in I. Okay, right, so I'm going to change from the I to E. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned that we have three origin, I, E, or question mark. So let's just change the origin. In router one, I'm going to use an IP prefix. Okay, IP prefix. I'm going to give it a name. So let's call it as a loopback zero. And I'm going to say that permit 101.1.1. Uh, this is a 24 subnet mask. 
okay display IP IP prefix all right so I have my prefix over here next I'm going to create a route policy okay so route policy I'm going to give them a name okay so I'm going to call it as a loopback zero as well so I'm going to do a permit node 10 if I'm going to match an IP prefix of L0 I'm going to apply a origin of EGP okay and the EGP here I'm going to give an AS number of 100 there you go so this is my policy my policy is called L0 and I'm going to match the prefix of L0 and I'm going to apply an origin of EGP 100 then I'm going to go into the uh, BGP 100. I'm going to say that if I'm going to peer with my peer of uh, 10.0.12.2, I'm going to use a route policy of L0, L0, and I'm going to export this out. Okay, there you go. All right, so I'm going to go back to the uh, router 2 and I'm going to look into the routing table. So as you can see that the origin is still I, so I'm going to use the uh, display command display route policy for me to check okay so um, my match over here is still not being matched okay so I'm going to do a refresh okay I'm going to refresh a BGP or export and I go back into router 2 there you go alright so you can see that once I refresh it it become the EGP and when I do a display BGP route so earlier on my origin is I now it's become E okay so uh, next I'm going to show you the origin of incomplete so let, let me actually go back into my R1 here and I go back into my BGP100 and I'm going to undo my peer of 10.0.12.2 route policy L0 export. So let me remove this. So um, I'm going to use the import command. So I'm also will undo the network of 101.1.1.0 okay so by doing so r2 will lose the 101 network all right so let me do here there you go 101 network is gone because i have removed the network statement so what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to do an import route direct okay so uh, i import this as a direct and when i go to router 2 there you go all right so you can see that the 101 uh, you're able to see this as a question mark now definitely uh, this interface and this interface is all direct so you can see that I also get this imported so if I want to just import this I can use a route policy but that's not really the that matter now because I want to show you how origin is being changed from I IGP to E EGP now to incomplete so when I do a display BGP route 101.1.1.0 you can see that the origin now is incomplete ASPath on the BGP alright so ASPath is a well-known mandatory there are two use of ASPath alright the first use of the ASPath is that it is a loop detection mechanism and the second use of the AS path is a uh, determine the path. All right. So based on the shortest AS path, I'm going to use that as the uh, optimum uh, route. Let's look into this uh, topology. I have a 10.0.0.0 slash 24 in the AS300 that's connecting to router 4. Router 4 advertises this route to AS400 which is R5 and AS100 which is R3 now when 
Alpha advertised the route of 10 network. It will attach the AS of 300 in the path. Okay, so this is a well-known mandatory and it is an AS path. So when AS400 received this route, it will re-advertise this to router 1. Now when router 5 advertised this route 10.0.0.0 to router 1, you notice that the AS path is appended here. So this is 400 and 300 is the origin AS. Now R4 advertised to R3 as well. So R3 is the receiving. So the AS300 is the original uh, AS. Now both R1 and R3 receive these two paths. And R1 will advertise this to R2 and R3 will advertise this to R2 as IBGP. Now when router 2 receive this advertisement, router 2 will see that there are two paths to 10 network. One is going through the router 5, which is on AS400. The other one is to router 4, where router 4 is only AS300 and going through the router 5 is using two AS path. Based on the uh, selection of the uh, path criteria, the shortest one will be preferred. So if none other is competing, then router 2 will choose router 4 directly as the preferred path. So this is the first one here. The AS path is used for the uh, path selection. Now AS path also used for the loop detection. So in this example, router 4 advertised to R3. R3 will advertise to R1. Okay. And in return, R1 will advertise this to AS400. Now when R1 advertised to 400, it will say that it is 100 AS and 300 AS. Right? Now R5 in return will also advertise to R4. When R5 advertise to R4, it will advertise as 400. Okay. This is my 400. Then I have 100. And finally, the origin of 300. Now when R4 receive this route, and you see that there is an AS300 and I am AS300, this update will be discarded. By doing so, I have just prevented a loop. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.